Hi, I'm Eddie Torres. And I'm Eddie Torres Jr. And we're here celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. And this is Histories and Salsa Music in New York City. I've had the privilege and the honor of working with the, what he's known as the king of Latin music, Mr. Dito Puente, and of course, Ralph Macardo, who in my opinion has been one of the greatest promoters of Latin music around the world. And I've had the pleasure of working with Tito for 21 years with my wife. And one of the things I remember Tito would always say that in order for music to survive and to stay alive, it needs a dance. The influences I had in my dance came from a variety of different people. For example, I grew up in a time where we had live Latin music almost in every club all over New York City and all of the boroughs. And there were great dancers at the time that I would admire. For example, we had a guy named Louis Machina, which he was famous for his footwork while he was dancing. And we had uh, Cuban Pete. We had uh, all these great Palladium dancers. They were probably the biggest influences for everyone. I got into dancing first through mom because she tricked me. Let me tell you the truth. She just tricked me into a dance class. And after that, I was hooked. And, um, you know, she's super, 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 not because she's my mom, but she is fire, 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 fire. Let me Amen. tell you. <laughs> so, but here I am now. Mom dances flamenco, which is from Spain. Here I am studying the Afro-Cuban and, and the Latin stuff. And here we are in New York. New York City is so important when it comes to the, the mambo. This is the Mecca here. Although mambo was a rhythm born in Cuba, once it came here to New York, just like everything else, we kind of like raised it like our baby and we, right? We added yes. all these things between yes. the jazz and the tap and the, yes. so yeah, it's, it's such a, how can you not love it? In every classic dance, there was a pioneer. There was someone who had a vision to take that dance and mm -hmm. that art, that, that, that art form and raise it and elevate it to a, a real classic art form mm -hmm. and that's what happened with the mambo now because at first it was just a house thing we just did it you know at house parties at clubs but now you can see the mambo in a social as well as you can see it in the Madison Square Garden and Carnegie Hall. Christopher Scott was the main choreographer of the In the Heights movie and he brought me onto the team um, looking for, you know, the, the roots of Afro and Latin culture and dance. And that's what the film needed. In the Heights needed that, you know, the, the, the roots of the culture. So it's a story of, a, you know, it's an immigrant story, a family struggling to survive. They come to New York and, you know, they look for a better a way of life, which is actually the reality for all of us. We, we got to represent Mambo on two, which is a huge deal in um in the heights this is again mambo another chance for mambo to be seen and not just mambo let me add palo cha-cha-cha rumba song these are all different dances that were in, included in the heights it's not just salsa while you're dancing remember the key to dance is not to just compete and see who's the better dancer right. but the real key and i have a, a phrase that people are using everywhere around the world which goes like this is this it's not who dances the best but who enjoys it the most that means have fun dancing should be a fun experience and then go for dance and do it in a very humble way but enjoy it.